So, good morning all of you and uh, we shall continue the discussion on uniform corrosion. And the last class we saw that uh, what are the parameters those affect the uniform corrosion. We saw that uh, the nature of the electrolyte, the temperatures, the velocity and these are the factors that affect the corrosion of the uniform corrosion of uh, metals. We gave some illustration yesterday that the relation between the corrosion of the metal and the environment many time is not straight forward with respect to the concentration of the corrosive agent. It is possible that you may increase the concentration of the corrosive agent, the corrosion rate may drop actually. We gave an example of uh, sodium chloride, uh, how when you increase the concentration in water, the corrosion rate goes through a maxima. And uh, in this case, the mechanism is simple that the, the oxidizer concentration uh, decreases. The oxidizer here is what is oxygen solubility decreases when you increase the sodium chloride concentration. We also recalled in the previous class that a similar example uh, lies with the corrosion of steel in nitric acid. That if you increase the concentration of nitric acid, the corrosion rate increases and then subsequently decreases. The mechanism there was different, there it is related to the passivity of the metal when you increase the concentration of nitric acid, the passivity increases. So, the underlying mechanism of corrosion in each case is required to find a correlation between the concentration of the corrosive agent and the corrosion tendency of the metal. So, this is a kind of general uh, uh, relation we saw, but uh, you know they are just illustrations. There are so many examples and there are so many actual cases in the industries and uh, you know you should be able to apply them conveniently and see how the corrosion rate of a given metal changes in, in each of these cases. The second uh, the parameter that I would like to talk uh, is on the temperatures ok. The temperature If you raise the temperature of the environment, what do you expect to you to happen? What will happen to corrosion rate? The rate of reaction will increase that is what Arrhenius law says right. The Arrhenius law says that for every uh, rise of 10 degree Celsius, the chemical reaction rate doubles actually right. But there are situations is true also ok, but there are situations that you do not follow the same. Uh, principle actually. Hmm? I just give only illustration, one illustration because there are several different cases that the different tendencies are happening at all. For example, let us look at uh, the uh, corrosion of steel. In water. Suppose uh, I take a, I, I take a, a, a beaker and I take pure water, simply water here and immerse a steel sample. And I just raise the temperatures ok, I raise the temperature by heating. If I can measure the corrosion rate of the steel with respect to the temperature, if I make a plot, temperature versus the corrosion rate, what you might expect is the corrosion rate go you know goes like that. 
but interestingly the corrosion rate starts falling like this. This is the room temperature, the temperature increases in this manner. Can you explain this? It is a neutral water, ok. Can you explain this? Is it possible to have like this? No one? No one has an answer. So, what is the cathodic reaction here in neutral water, which of course is open to atmosphere here? Yeah, this is oxygen reduction reaction, right? You the cathodic reaction here is oxygen. will combine a total forms for minus. So, now you tell me what will happen yeah of course, water will vaporize, but assume that water is not vaporizing what happens anybody has an idea yeah this is this is related to dissolved oxygen right even when the water vaporizes what happens the remaining water will have same corrosion tendency unless you have some salts and all. You take a pure water you evaporate the character of the water remains the same right. It is oxygen solubility with respect to temperature that counts. So, what happens when rise the temperature the solubility decreases right. So, there are two opposing processes one the rate of reaction is expected to increase with respect to temperature, but this oxygen solubility decreases right. So, the oxygen solubility decreases. So, the corrosion rate is decreasing. So, it is about approximately is about 80 degree Celsius you see that the corrosion rate drops significantly. What happens if the same temperature ok effect of this what happens if the system is closed? The system is closed not you know uh, open to the atmosphere ok. Say you have a beaker and I just close it here and I have water up to this levels I have a steel and uh, this is water. This is steel and you are going to heat it now ok. So, what do you think will happen in this case? What will happen to corrosion rate with temperatures? Yeah, the corrosion rate will keep increasing right. almost increasing right it increases this is the corrosion rate versus the temperature. So, it is a closed system So, in this case the oxygen does not escape there is a pressure. So, remains in the system the corrosion rate increases with respect to temperatures. So, this is different from what happens in the, the closed system. The closed system 
will decay. So, this is your open system ok. So, the examples given here are a illustration they are not exhaustive by any nature ok. Let us take the other other uh, parameter uh, and then we will uh, we will move on to the next aspect of the uniform corrosion. Next is the velocity. So, what are the effects of velocity on corrosion of a metal? Especially if it is diffusion control, ok. If it is, if it is activation controlled, if it is diffusion controlled so what do you think will happen in both these cases so in a diffusion control process the corrosion rate will increase so what will happen to the activation control case yeah no change will happen right so this is the case 1 the case 2 the case 1 no change, the case 2 corrosion rate increases. So, probably what would happen is something like this. right you will find that the corrosion rate might increase and then probably is going to remain constant can you can you so i am marking as the region a the region b what is the difference between region a and region b Yeah. A is diffusion control and B is activation control. So, it is a transition from activation control, I am sorry, a transition from diffusion control to the activation control where the corrosion rate does not change. Now, let us move on to the next case where if the system is passivating. Let us say the system is passivating, say if the metal shows So, what do you think will happen in this case if it is diffusion control? Suppose assume that um, you know something somewhere here it is diffusion control ok. So, what do you think will happen? Yeah. How, ok, if I plot velocity against let us say uh, the corrosion rate, how do you think will vary? The first increases and then there will be ok, first I think you see there is increases 
and then there will be sharp decrease and could remain almost the same. Agreed? Any any doubts anybody has here? Can anybody tell me what will be this corrosion rate corresponds to in terms of current, current density? This corrosion rate it corresponds to IP, right? The passivation current density, right? Okay. Now let us get into the, the next aspect of quantification of the corrosion rate. Please again uh, understand we are not talking about quantification of uh, various forms of corrosion. We are talking about quantification of the corrosion rate in the, in the case of uniform corrosion rate. You cannot, you, you cannot say that there is only one way of quantifying corrosion rate in all the forms of corrosion we talked about in the, in the previous class. Okay. So, this corresponds to a uniform corrosion rate. So, how do you quantify this? Any suggestions? Weight loss measurement, right? So, the weight loss is a straight forward one. Okay. What, what is mean by weight loss? So, what how do you what is the unit for this? Yeah, how we got meals per year? How do you visualize the weight loss? What kind of? I mean, how do you do a test in the lab, for example? How do you how do you determine the corrosion rate? Yeah. Take the weight. Yeah. So you 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 uh, take a known dimension of the specimen, right? You immerse it in a in a electrolyte of <laughs> interest, a corrosive environment. and for a known period and then take it out and again measure the weight you see the change in the weight of the samples. Now, what you are going to measure is the measurement what I want to do here is is the weight loss what I going to measure right. And that is a given time of exposure let us say T given time of exposure of course, you need to always qualify you know what is the temperature you know if you change the temperature then everything will, will change. So, uh, you have measure the weight loss um, and what else you know? You should also be knowing dimensions. dimensions right you know the surface area. The straight forward use of this data is going to be what W T I surface area is not it. What is the unit here in this case? Unit is going to be mass the time upon area right. right or not ok. And there is a problem with this unit. What is the problem in this unit? 
when I say there is a problem in the in the unit I am talking in terms of is utility in material selection material design you know for a given application. Suppose I give this unit to someone okay let us say gram per centimeter square per day suppose I give a unit for example I say gram per centimeter square per day okay. Suppose I give a unit like this, this unit may not be of any relevance in actual situations. You cannot compare this in terms of life of a given component. For example, I may use lead, I may have aluminum right and if both have the same value and if used as a pipe of the same thickness Assume for argument's sake that okay, it is 5 milligram per decimeter square per day is the is the corrosion rate. I am giving 5 milligram, huh? 5 milligram per centimeter square per day for lead and aluminum. And in one case, I have a lead pipe of 3 millimeter diameter, other case, aluminum pipe of 3 millimeter diameter, and the thickness. I am sorry in, 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 in both cases the thickness of the pipe is 3 millimeter um, uh, thickness aluminum and, and the lead and the diameter of the pipe may be about say about 10 centimeter diameter pipe ok. If the uh, unit of corrosion here both the cases is 5 milligram per centimeter square per day which of these two pipes will, will corrode will leak or will the leak at the same time is the question clear to you if I if I have a corrosion rate of 5 milligram per centimeter square per day and the pipe of 10 centimeter dia and thickness 3 millimeter thickness ok. Do you think the both the pipeline will, will leak at the same time? The density will, will, will matter right. So, which will leak first in this case? <laughs> Only any of them. Which one do you think will leak first? It's a simple calculation, right? Which will leak first, lead or aluminum? Hmm? So aluminum will leak first, isn't it? For a given weight, okay, the aluminum will have larger volume, larger thickness. So aluminum will will corrode first. So this unit is not going to be useful in real applications. You should have a unit which is in terms of the thickness, right? So you should have a thickness. So, the weight loss measurement you know you should be used to calculate thickness. So, what happens now? So, you have weight loss is known, you know the thickness, you know the uh, I am sorry, you know, you know the time here ok and you know the um, surface area. So, what you should do? You should also thickness. What is the rho here? Is the density. So, this will be what is the unit of this? What is the unit of this? Huh? What is that? Please look at this. It is it is the 
dimension what is the dimension it is the is the length or okay you can say length or thickness dimension per what per time. So, you can uh, you can use uh, it is you no know, you can able to you know formulate any equation that you like you know it is not it is not that these equations are to be taken from the book. So, if you want to calculate the corrosion rate in terms of millimeter per year you can able to substitute all this you know time in terms of year surface area in terms of uh, in maybe in terms of centimeters square and density may be gram per um, centimeter cube and similarly the weight also can be given in terms of <coughs> grams. So, it is possible for you to calculate and arrive at an equation of this kind here. this is going to be the corrosion rate of the metal in terms of mm per year. You can also have it for um, mm per year or whatever ok, you can do that. I a small change here please make us delta w here. So, w in terms of gram rho in terms of gram per uh, centimeter cube, area in terms of what in terms of um, area in, in terms of uh, centimeter square time in terms of hours. You can have time in terms of you know if you want a day then automatically things will change ok this is the way uh, the corrosion rate can be really determined the weight loss measurements. We also seen in the in one of the classes that why the weight loss measurement is not a very convenient one right. The question that comes is how long how long do one immerse specimen now this is given as mpy is a different unit upon sorry here it must be 2000 by mpy terms of hours ok that gives you the duration of uh, exposure to the to the environment. If the corrosion rate is very very less then you need to expose for longer time because what happens there will be insignificant weight loss if the corrosion rate is very low ok. So, it is just a thumb rule ok is just a thumb rule ok. You will see a reasonable you, you can find out you know you, you can do that. For example, um, if the you just substitute if the corrosion rate is 5 MPY or 20 MPY or 100 MPY what happens to the corrosion rate in that many number of hours right you can do that right. So, you can see that there will be a significant weight loss will happen in in relation to this equation 2000 upon MPY actually ok. Yeah, this is a thumb rule uh, there is no derivation is done to get this equation here. Who? Yeah, for example, if I if I if I keep it as 1900 hours by MPY I do not think somebody is going to question it at all actually right. The idea here is it gives a some so, see when I say thumb rule what does it mean? It means a kind of approximation that you will attempt to do in order to get a useful information 
right it is a thumb rule actually so it comes from experience ok. Uh, it is simple to understand right corrosion eddy is on the denominator right automatically the time required for exposure is reduced when the MPY increases. What is the second uh, uh, what is the other method of doing it we also discussed um, earlier the other thing was ok. The other one was um, on electrochemical technique. right. There are two methods we saw anybody can recollect what do you determine here you determine the I car corrosion current density. So, you, you determine this corrosion current density So, one of the methods one is a TAFL extrapolation. So, we have seen this in detail when we discuss about the modern theories right. I am just only recollecting what we discussed earlier uh, right. You can do two kinds of experimentation one is potential static the other is galvanostatic. You might have done have you done this experiment any of you? So far, what you normally do is uh, you normally use a potential static uh, or potential dynamic uh, test, uh, wherein you apply a given potential, you measure the corresponding current. So, in this case, you use a cell uh, called a corrosion cell. The corrosion cell consists of what? A corrosion cell consists of three electrodes is a working electrode. You have again a counter electrode. you have a reference electrode. Please notice you normally choose a you choose a, a small area uh, of about 1 centimeter square you you mask the remaining things with a with a resin right you mark the remaining things with the, with the resin ok and you expose about 1 centimeter square area you you mask this with the resin here as we notice earlier and uh, you pass the current between the counter electrode and the working electrode so what happens the potential on the working electrode is increasing so you measure the potential of the reference electrode you know you measure the potential of the working electrode in relation to the reference electrode. So, you have here a, a potential stat and you now it is they are connected to a potential stat or, or the galvanic stat. In fact, a single electronic system you can operate in either mode a potential static mode or galvanic static mode. So, you could able to obtain a
right you have seen this earlier also right please uh, go back and refer to your notes. So, you can draw a tangent uh, to this uh, tuffle line and you draw a tangent to this tuffle line here and this corresponds to right what is this current called? I car and this corresponds to G car and this slope is what is the slope? Yeah, what type of slope is called? Beta, beta C right and this is beta A. If uh, one wants to measure the exchange current density for the cathodic reaction, how do I get that? Yeah, how do I get I naught? How do I get I naught from here in this one? The voltage in that equation. What do you call that? In this graph, how do you get? The graph is given to you. Now we need to do. Okay, what do you need in order to get that? What do you need? What do you need to get I naught? E? Yeah, you cannot use all the terminologies. There's only one you can use, right? Okay. So you need to use equilibrium potential, right? So you cannot just please don't use all the words. It has no meaning at all. Okay. So, you can extrapolate this to an equilibrium potential suppose this is your equilibrium potential and you could extrapolate this and you would get I naught here. You can also get I naught for the corresponding uh, anodic uh, reaction and so you can get this. From if I are given I car, how do I determine the, the corrosion rate? So, I car is given, how do I get the corrosion rate? Let us say corrosion rate may be in mm per year or, or MPY or what unit that you want. How do I get this? What is the method? Is there any relationship that can be used to determine the, the corrosion rate? Anyone? What is that law that says that current is equal to what? Yeah? No one has an idea? Hmm? What is that? Yeah, but why are you hesitant? Okay. See, this is a Faraday's law, right? So, you know that 96,500 coulombs, if the current is passed, either you can dissolve metal or anything, okay, of 1 gram equivalent weight. What is 1 gram equivalent weight? It is, is equivalent to atomic weight by the valency. So, if you pass 96,500 coulombs of current, you can either deposit this amount of metal or you can dissolve this amount of metal depending upon whether the current is anodic or cathodic actually right. Now, if I car is what you are you are getting this let us say I car is in terms of let us say ampere let us say per centimeter square is what the current is all about. How do I calculate now? How do I calculate per year for example? What is the first step? How do I convert this into coulombs? 
So, to convert this into coulombs, how to do that? So, you have to So, you have to find out what is the current that is flowing for one year right. So, you have to have how many days in a day how many hours in an hour how many minutes in a, in a minute how many seconds this gives you the coulombs of current that is flowing if the I car is given there ok. So, how do we get the corrosion rate from this? So, I can calculate what is the how many equivalents of weight the metal corroded for this many amount of coulombs right. So, how do you how do you get this? So, weight of metal dissolved equals to what equal to I car atomic weight 96500 coulombs into the valency right. So, this is the weight right, this is the weight of the metal that is lost in one year ok and one year in what is the, so what is this one year last right, what is the unit here can anybody tell me, this is ampere per centimeter square right, this is uh, this is the weight also gram whatever ok. So, what is the, what is the is a coulombs right. So, the whole thing is in coulombs, coulombs per centimeter square, coulombs weight. So, you what you are having here is what is weight per centimeter square per per year right. No. So, you will get here weight ok a centimeter square per year. So, how do you get the thickness? So, I divide this by weight centimeter square per year at the density right. So, what should be the equation now? The corresponding equation is going to be I car 365-24-60 multiplied by atomic weight 96500 coulombs into the number of electrons n number of electrons rho density of this. And if it is an alloy, what happens? If it is an alloy, the atomic weight is not very easy there. So, you need to calculate the equivalent of that, ok. I am just giving this equation here. I want it to analyze and understand that actually, ok, because we are not going to have time. So, for an alloy, ok, so equivalent weight of an alloy. for an alloy it can be obtained by atomic uh, fraction ok 
multiply by atomic weight upon n i sigma of that. So, it is summation of all of them right I, I have the number of um, number of uh, species uh, for example, I have a brass of copper 70 and uh, 30 zinc you should be able to do that right. You can you know the weight percent from there you can convert into a atomic percent from atomic percent you can get the fraction here and you can able to get this value without much of problem. I leave this for you to work out when you have time if you have any questions uh, we can discuss uh, you know later actually. So, I do not want to take too much of time uh, in this class actually. So, please do work out when you have time if you have any questions you let me know about it ok. So, the 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 electro uh, the electrochemical techniques you can use uh, TAFL. What is the other technique? Electrochemical one is used to determine the I car. Anybody? Yeah, denaturation, right? So that is called stone Geary. Okay, equation also called as linear polarization technique. Here what do you do? You apply a very small amplitude of voltage or current right. You apply delta V across what? Across, across E car. Huh? So, it must be plus or minus about 10 millivolt. You apply and you measure the uh, current. is your E positive E negative I positive and I negative ok. What is the slope? Slope is equal to RP. Now, RP can be related to I car. What is that? RP is equal to 1 upon I car. beta a plus beta c upon beta c. Please check this equation is correct or not ok ok. So, you can able to um, you can able to uh, use this techniques in order to um, determine the corrosion rate of the metals now ok. So, so far we have seen the basic reactions that are occurring in a uniform corrosion, what are the possible cathodic reactions? We also saw what are the parameters that affect the uniform corrosion. Then we also looked at how to determine the corrosion rate of metals from the uniform corrosion point of view. Now comes uh, how do you tackle this problem? How do you uh, from the engineering point of view, how do we control the corrosion of metals or how do I design a system so that I have a life which I need 20 years or 50 years whatever time, how do I do this? So, that is the question now. So, how do we control uniform corrosion.
one again choose a proper material selection you can do that you can also look at the coatings we can also see the use of corrosion inhibitors and four we can also use electrochemical techniques what I mean by this here you can use or employ cathodic protection you can also employ anodic protection. So, let us try to address each of them and um, see how we can um, we can minimize uh, the corrosion and how to increase the life of the structures ok and uh, we will see now. Let us uh, look at the material selection. what is the basis of material selection would you like to choose the best corrosion resistant material all cases let us say oh titanium does not corrode let me suggest that ok everywhere ok go and tell them no ok let us use titanium heat exchanger ok use titanium or cars use titanium is the best way to do that what is what is the criteria for that yeah for first is the cars i mean of course availability is one more thing design is other one yeah fabrication suppose you are going to do a fabrication suppose you want weld not weldable so selection of material depends upon several criteria cost is one important criteria no doubt about it in addition to that availability the ability to fabricate the shapes that you are really interested actually the cost of the system you have forgotten very important one what is the expected life of the component there is there are some more important issues which are not so obvious the issues are like safety involved for example you, you you have a very high risk like a, a nuclear power plant there the cost is not going to be a primary issue ok the safety is going to be involved actually here. So, you might choose a better material so that you do not have run the risk of any kind of failure and the consequences are very severe. And uh, so, when you when you talk about material selection there are several factors that has to be considered. The cost of course, obviously a very important one as a general criteria you can choose materials depending upon the necessity of this. Suppose, I choose a material for let us say valve. say one example or I choose a material for a tank or I choose a material for 
let us say a body implant. or use it for a pharma industries. Now, look at this let us look at the case 1 and the case 2 take an example here. What will be the criteria you know the corrosion rate now see corrosion rates probably maybe you can say you know you may have MPY now still people start using the you, you know you still continue to use unit like MPY you can also use uh, mm perrier ok. Now, let us take the case of a valve and a tank when you choose a material for valve and tank what will be the corrosion rate criteria. Would you like to have the same corrosion resistance for wall as that of the tank? What happens? I wanted to talk. Do you choose which is very critical here, valve or tank? Valve, isn't it? Because even there is a small corrosion occurring in the valve, leak will occur. But in a tank, even it corrodes, it's not going to have immediate threat for any kind of leakages. Will not happen at all. So, selection of material for valve is more critical than that of the tank. Same thing you can talk about a pipeline, a pipeline a water pipeline is not so critical, but it is a gas pipeline is very critical and if there is a pipeline let us say oil and gas commission they have pipelines in the offshore it is too remote. Now, even there is a leak is very difficult to repair that actually. So, maintenance is another important criteria which we need to talk about if you are able to maintain very easily then you can have a bit of uh, chance taking a low uh, corrosion resistance material, but it is not easily maintainable you do not have access to it then you have to go for a material which is more resistance to corrosion. So, well let us say about we talk about corrosion rate is about in the range of 5 MPY the corrosion rate. It is this structures you have somewhere in the range of 5 and why is this the tanks and here the problem is not structural integrity the problem here is more of tolerance right the body will not tolerate a bit of nickel ions getting segregated due to corrosion. You may have implant mechanically stronger no problem. So, here the corrosion rate is because of the contamination issues. So, here the corrosion rate has to be lower than 1 MPY. If the corrosion is is going to be greater than say 50 MPY or 20 MPY not acceptable. Even in normal cases unsatisfactory why it can contaminate the product you can replace it, but replacing is not acceptable here you know. So, sometimes you can replace component not necessarily that you go for an excellent corrosion resistance at all right it talks about that. So, we use the term what is called as life cycle cost this is the parameters industry use in deciding the selection of materials. The life cycle cost of course, does not involve directly the safety issues. You can integrate safety issues in the cost if you want I mean then it is taken care of. So, generally when people talk about life cycle cost they do not look at the 
the consequences of corrosion in terms of safety and all this other issues. So, material selection is based on this right. Now, the thing that we would like to know is how do you select materials? I classify the corrosion resistance of the material. We can look at two, one is based on the nobility. A metal which is relatively noble would have better corrosion resistance, right. Also look at from the point of view of passivation tendency, right. So, broadly you can you can you can see that the tendency of the metal to corrode depend upon two properties the nobility and the passivation. I give an example here right let us take a nobility. We are talking about engineering materials, no? we are not talking platinum, gold, and all, let us not worry about that, right. Suppose you take iron based material, you have nickel based one and copper based one, the nobility increases. So, iron based alloys are inferior compared to nickel based alloys. And of course, copper based alloys are going to be good. For example, you take copper and zinc and copper and nickel. Can you guess which will be having better corrosion resistance? Copper nickel, right. So, you should also be able to get a feel for how the corrosion performance of the metal will behave based on the alloying elements. So, nobility there are other complexities uh, we are not talking about the microstructure may complicate the issues, but generally the alloying elements if they are relatively noble we can say that yes it is better material ok. The other example is the stainless steel you have what iron, nickel, chromium, iron, manganese chromium you know they are right this is inferior this is inferior. So, it is based on the nobility we can say that which metal which alloy is better or which alloy is going to be inferior we can talk about, but you have the limited options here the alloys which are passivating are far better ok passivation see in this case stainless steels right so titanium alloys or zirconium alloys or we can say uh, tantalum based alloys. Chromium cannot be used as a structural material because it is quite brittle right. So, stainless steels, titanium alloys, zirconium alloys, tantalum alloys they are all based on the passivity. What is the criteria here? If the IP is is low, then corrosion resistance increases. This is a criteria for that. I just give an example uh, in stainless steel. People have determined the corrosion rate of iron 
in atmospheric corrosion, corrosion rate of iron versus the, the chromium we talk about. So, somewhere here, but I think it is close to about 11 weight percent chromium, and you call this as stainless steels. This is for iron, right? This is for iron. Okay. So, um, the selection of materials of course, you can look at the uh, there are a lot of handbooks are available uh, you know you can look at this uh, you know the data available from there they are used to for material selection purposes is done, but it is better to have a broad idea about how the metals behave with respect to the corrosion. Again it depends upon the environment the same thing cannot be said that the alloy will behave same manner if you change the environment conditions ok. So, with this I think we will uh, close it for the day we will continue this discussion uh, uh, next week and uh, yeah I would need probably one more class to complete the uniform corrosion of metals.